to talk about is five experiments in five minutes. And um, uh, this was ignited by a family dinner where one of my nephews asked me, what do you do? And then, I, I, well, I actually started thinking, what do I do? And uh, the thing that I do is I make rain gauges, uh, these acoustical rain gauges. But if I look at what I do with most of my time, um, it means that I am usually uh, soldering, and it means also that I'm usually um, debugging embedded C code. And that is something that you don't want to tell to a seven-year-old because he's probably going to run away crying um, and, and wants to get become a manager instead of an engineer scientist, which I think is not a different thing. So, but then instead of telling me what I do all the time, I, I just show him and, and I show him this. I make this. And I, I don't make it myself like I do now, I make it together with him. Because this was my first prototype. This was our first prototype, rain gauge. And um, you make it together with them and it works exactly the same way that our acoustic rain gauges work. And this is like less than four euros of material and six year olds can uh, uh, do the soldering. And um, about, about that, by the way, this is in a high school or in a primary school where I did workshops like these. Um, so I think that we should all, when you get asked, what is it that you do, we should say stuff um, to inspire kids. And then, of course, hydrologists can say, yeah, but you've got an easy example. You make rain gauges, and you've got a simple example that you can work with. Um, and then I said, because you may be studying the water cycle or whatever, I got an example for you if you do the water cycle. Um, this is cake from the Starbucks, and you can use that as an example to show, look, what the difference is between different landscapes. This is. Uh, an urban landscape because it has this nice chocolate coating and <laughs> this is non-urban landscape. If they one of these, this is blue curacao because it's blue, and you just spray it, come on spray, it's open or something, yeah, you just spray it on top of that and then you see that on the urban landscape it immediately runs off and you get all kind of flooding. Whereas on the non-urban landscape, you see you get actually groundwater movement. <laughs> and then at the end of the dinner, you give them a piece of blue filled cake, which is disgusting. Um, so that's something you could do, big pitch. Um, but then you might say, um, okay, I'm not in hydrology, I do CO2 spacing, for example. Um, and you can tell them all about how that works, but you can also just make some CO2 together with them. This is just regular household vinegar. Um, by the way, I took this with me on a plane, all of it. <laughs> really. Uh, this is a balloon filled with baking soda. Um, yeah, try taking a balloon with white powder on a plane. Um, and you just say, look, baking soda, and this does blow up the balloon. <laughs> and that's all CO2. And if you were allowed to do something with fire in this thing, I could have like a candle and then extinguish it with all the CO2 I'm now creating. Um, right over there. And by the way, if you ever make American pancakes with um, uh, uh, corn milk, that's uh, buttermilk and uh, baking powder, that's the same reaction going on. That's why you have bubbles in there. Um, but you could also you could also take it further and look at look. I make I work with plasmas. Even if you don't work with plasmas, you can tell them you work with plasmas because it's cool. <laughs> uh, basically, I got one of these. A lot of kids do have one of these, right? He said that's plasma. You know, you can make it yourself. You just daisy chain some 9 volt batteries to get up to 50 ish volts, connect it to a cup with some aluminium foil, uh, this is another clamp with a, a stick from a uh, pencil, and you just put that over there, and you make yourself a nice plasma cutter. That doesn't work well because my minuses. There you go, plasma cutter. The light you see is actually a little ball of plasma. And the smoke is not going to ignite the... No. <laughs> Good. Of course, um, that's all science-based, but then again, uh, I now have a two-year-old, and he might ask me stuff, like, what do you do? And, stuff. And, and I also have to come up with stuff that's cool to do together with him. Um, and, and he's not interested in all the science part yet, but I can ask him, but he's interested in going to the zoo. So what you can do with him is you can ask him, do elephants brush their teeth? And if he says yes, you say, what with? Well, with elephant toothpaste. 
Um, this is the peroxide that I have over here. Uh, this is 10%, but I secretly put 35% in here. I mix it with some dishwasher and uh, some uh, food collar. And I need one of these. Oh, my yeast is working. This is basic yeast that you use for bread. Oh. <laughs> go, 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 go. Yay, there we go. Let me just hold that up. Elephant toothpaste. <laughs> ah, you shouldn't get that on your fingers. So those were five experiments you can do with kids in five minutes. I bet you can come up with something that you can do with kids when you go back home to, to make them enthusiastic about science and technology. Thank you very much.